What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Mindful Gains. I'm Bryce. Appreciate you clicking on this video. If you checked out my last video about what is low self-esteem, I appreciate you checking this one out as well. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to overcome low self-esteem. All right, let's get right into it. If at any point this content is resonating with you, please like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate any of that support. And let's go ahead and jump right into the video. How to overcome low self-esteem. All right, first and foremost, you can't overcome something that you're not aware of. You have to become aware that you may even be struggling with low self-esteem. Now, in that previous video, I already talked about what self-esteem is, all right? But if you have, you know, that negative way of thinking about yourself and you're, you're not a very confident person, you have to become curious. You have to get to a point where it's like, why do I feel this way about myself? Where, where did this come from? You weren't born like that. You weren't born thinking that way about yourself. I promise you, you weren't. It was created. It was developed within you. So get curious about that. It may be tough. It may be dark. It may be messy. But get curious about that. Where did this come from? And I would start with your parents. Were your parents some people that talked a lot of shit? Were your parents some people that were very critical of you? Were you allowed to make mistakes? Were you allowed to mess up and not be made fun of for it? Because that type of energy, that type of dynamics, that plays a lot into who you've become. That's not to say that you can't change that. I dealt with that myself, you know, dealt with a lot of uh, critical conversation in my household. And I became a very critical individual because of it until I was able to become aware of it. But I had to go through a lot of life and a lot of messing up to become aware of it. And hopefully this video saves you some time. All right. So improve your self-awareness. All right. Now, how does one improve their self-awareness? I say it in damn near every other video. Meditation. All right. Now, I know most people are going to be like, oh, meditation. That shit don't work. I can't meditate. My mind don't turn off. I get it. Stop thinking your mind is going to turn off. That's not what's going to happen. When you sit and meditate, you become the observer of your thoughts. You become the watcher of your thoughts. They're not going to just disappear, but you're going to be, be able to become more comfortable with them. And that's going to translate to when you're out in the world, just having conversations with people. Now, why am I talking about meditation so much? It's because it allows you to become more comfortable with yourself. And meditation is, is interesting how it works. Like if you do that shit regularly, it starts to kind of shift you in a way where you start to recognize yourself in a way that you've never recognized yourself. You just start to like, you start to notice yourself. You start to notice your thoughts. You start to be like, damn, why did I think that? Like, it's like you can catch why you're responding to something a certain way a bit easier than you were able to do it once before. Hopefully that makes sense. You know, so that's one of the main ways I know how to become self-aware. I do know journaling helps. I don't do it as frequently as I need to do it. That's why I don't ever really talk about it too much, but I do know getting your thoughts out on paper, um, creating that stream of consciousness and starting to write your feelings out, write out what you're going through. That increases self-awareness as well, but just becoming more mindful. You know, mind, mindfulness is, is learning to, to live in the present moment and meditation cultivates that. So the more mindful you can become, the more aware of self you can become. I have other videos on self-awareness. I'll be sure to leave that link in the description. Check it out where I kind of break down what it is. But self-awareness in of itself is a game changer. It's the cheat code and it can really help you with having low self-esteem. It's the way to overcome it because you cannot overcome it if you're unaware that it's even happening. You're so used to thinking a certain way and just operating a certain way that it's just your norm. Say for example, you spill something on the floor. First thing you say is, damn it, I'm such an idiot. You know what I mean? I know some of y'all be doing that. And it's like, no, you're not an idiot. You just dropped something on the floor. But maybe when you was a kid and you dropped something on the floor, somebody was right on your ass like, what are you, an idiot? And then now you've adopted that voice in your head every time you mess up. Uh -uh, uh -uh. You can change that. It's going to take a lot of work, though. It's going to take a lot of awareness. All right. Just to go ahead and get you ready for the ride. It's going to take a lot of awareness to do that. 
and a lot of practice for those who are, you know, into that type of shit. But yeah, self-awareness is so powerful and um, it can really help you to improve how you see yourself because a lot of us don't see ourselves. We're just so used to operating on an automatic type of uh, wavelength and, and frequency that we, we don't really see how we're actually operating until we intentionally do some work to be able to really see ourselves. And once you start seeing yourself, you develop a choice and a way to be able to speak to yourself in a more positive way. It's like you learn how to shift that inner critic, that inner dialogue that's going on. You can shift that. You don't have to remain so negative all the time. You can learn to reframe it. I've done it. I used to be hella critical, just overly judgmental, and it, and it was too much. And it was a series of things that happened in my life to be able to get me to this point where I can recognize when that's happening. If I'm stepping into to being critical about something and I pull myself out of that and say, you know, I don't have to be critical. I don't have to have something to say about any and everything, you know, and that in turn improves your confidence. Once you know you have the ability to choose how you want to respond, that's empowering. You know, knowledge is empowering in general. And I think that plays a lot into low self-esteem too. We're not educated on certain things. We don't know certain things. So we feel like, damn, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. So I must be stupid or no, it's like teach yourself, empower yourself, educate yourself. The more that you learn, the more that you know, you're going to feel like Superman out here because you're equipping yourself with knowledge. So when you're trying to overcome this low self-esteem, where you're trying to improve your confidence, improve your self-worth, you have to almost like reparent yourself. You have to talk to yourself like as if you were a child again and, and speak positively to yourself. And, and damn, it's okay that you dropped that plate on the floor. It's all good. Damn, I made a mistake, you know? Or, if you catch yourself saying, damn, I'm an idiot, you know, say, damn, no, you're not an idiot. You know, you just made him like literally talk to yourself, have these conversations with yourself. You're not crazy if you do it. You're just trying to retrain yourself. All right. So low self-esteem, man, it's something that's beatable, but it requires a lot of work. Improve your self-awareness. That's the goal. And you'll hear me say that in all my videos. Improve your self-awareness. Read books on it. YouTube it. Check out my videos on it. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.